As we continue to push through this very, very rough and strange year, it does seem like we have some pretty big things to look forward to in the coming weeks and months. It seems like June's going to be packed full of gaming announcements, even without E3. It seems like a lot of the top AAA game publishers are going to have their events, and obviously in July we have a big Xbox Series X reveal event, which seems like we're going to have a bunch of reveals for first-party Xbox games like Halo Infinite. And then before then, in June, it seems like that's when we're going to have the first really big PlayStation 5 reveal event in which we're again going to see some first party exclusive games from Sony, which probably will include Horizon Zero Dawn 2, and there's been a bunch of other rumors for other titles that we could possibly see, but it does seem like we have some fun things ahead. Anyway, today we have a variety of different gaming news topics to go over, including some smaller ones that I quickly want to go over right now. And the first one is Code T Thesis, and there's been a question of if this is a ripoff of Cyberpunk 2077 because the trailer looks very much like what we've seen from Cyberpunk 2077. Now the game, I believe it's mobile, it's being published by NetEase, it's another one of these Chinese gaming companies who is known for this, they do this a lot, and they get sued for it a lot. Now, while the game, it doesn't seem like it's going to be like a ripoff of Cyberpunk 2077, the trailer definitely, it steals or takes some shots from what we've seen so far in promotional material for Cyberpunk 2077, including one notable shot, which was I believe in the 2013 CG trailer for Cyberpunk 2077. It's pretty darn blatant, so not a Cyberpunk 2077 clone, but this is kind of what we see out of the Chinese gaming market, so nothing really new, just something that I thought was interesting to share. And we also have, I guess something that's another very obvious statement, G2A has finally admitted that they sold stolen game keys, although they're really not apologizing and doing much about it, or even saying they're going to stop this, they just are trying to put out statements that try to, I guess, minimize the situation and downplay how big this has been on their platform, so nothing again, nothing more to that than, I guess, G2A finally realizing what we all realized years ago. And they're only responding now because of the PR damage that they've suffered from so many developers and individuals that have been hurt from this. Uh, the next story we have is EA's net revenue from Ultimate Team has been revealed for this fiscal year, and if you were at all thinking that the microtransaction nonsense that they pull, if, if they're suffering any repercussions for any of the stuff that they've done, they're not. Uh, it actually, they're setting record highs now. And I, I've been saying this on Twitter a lot, and if you don't follow me, follow me over there if you haven't, but the important thing a lot of people need to know is the reason why they want to bring this model into their non-sports franchises like Star Wars Battlefront, which they failed to do years ago, as we all know with the Star Wars Battlefront 2 loot box debacle, and what they've also wanted to do with Battlefield, they want to bring that model because look at this money, look how much they're making, and this is what they're going to be working on for the years to come, to try to normalize their microtransaction nonsense until people just don't care. That's kind of why I always draw attention to anything and everything that they do, because definitely I am very nervous about the future of this industry. Also speaking of microtransactions and another publisher who has often pulled a lot of nonsense, we have Activision. And it was revealed that Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2, the, the remake, will not have microtransactions at launch. And this is important because the publisher is Activision. And you know what they've done before in the past? Modern Warfare Remastered. You know what that got? Microtransactions after release. And then also another game published by them, Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. Again, that game received microtransactions long after release, and I believe the developers, even before launching the game, said that there would be no microtransactions, but... I mean, Activision had a dollar to make, so they took it and they didn't care what they said beforehand. So really, if you haven't learned your lesson already, just never trust these AAA game publishers like EA or Activision Blizzard. While Tony Hawk uh, Pro Skater 1 and 2 Remake is not getting microtransactions at launch, well, we know what Activision does and what they've done in the past, and I'm going to say that there's a very good chance that a number of months after release, well, there could be some cosmetics or something added. Now, some other news, we have Mafia 2's Definitive Edition and while a lot of people, including myself, were very excited about this, uh, it's just a complete mess.
yes. Like, there are videos showing so many issues with this remaster. It's really just so sad to see, because Mafia 2 is one of my favorite games of all time, and it really does deserve better. But I know we don't talk about this very often, but 2K Games really has gotten away with a lot of their BS, whether they're WWE video games are just god-awful and completely lazy than the microtransactions in NBA 2K, and really just everything that they've delivered in the last number of years has been just utter crap. I mean, that's the nicest way of putting it without getting that demonetization symbol, but really, I, I just... Anything coming from them has been really disappointing. Well, as you can see in some of the videos that I'm showing on the screen, there's just tons of glitches, blatant pop-in, uh, there's slideshow-like performance with frame rates just dropping instantly once you enter a city, and that's just just a lazy remaster that needed a lot more work. And as you can also see, I believe that this remaster is being made from Mafia 3's engine, which, if you played Mafia 3, there's some pretty big technical issues, and one of those actually is blinding lights. That's something that another player recorded. And then, yes, we have Assassin's Creed Unity-style facial glitches. So, really just a sad remaster that deserved better and hopefully does get fixed through patches and stuff, but really disappointing to see, and it doesn't really inspire much uh, hope for the Mafia 1 Definitive Edition, which I believe is supposed to be coming later this year. Now, a remaster that actually does look good? Saints Row the Third Remastered, and it just looks phenomenal. Like, it actually seems like the developer cared, unlike what's happening with Mafia 2's Definitive Edition. And yes, this level of work and detail to improve upon a game that had some issues last gen, it makes me want to spend money on this remaster. Now to the final smaller news story just briefly want to mention, it's news that Sirius Sam 4 will be exclusive to Google Stadia and PC until 2021. Stadia's biggest exclusive yet. Now this is something that I warned and mentioned multiple times once, you know, Epic Game Store is gobbling up and making so many PC games exclusive. Exclusive. I had feeling that eventually other companies would get in on this, maybe Amazon in the future, but for now we have probably Google, and I don't think that this is the end of it. This is a strategy that has worked. It worked for the Epic Game Store, it pulled people away from Steam, and I guess Google Stadia, with all the problems that they've had since it began, if they can't get people to willingly join, why not pretty much force them if they want to play one of their highly anticipated games, like Serious Sam 4, or who knows what else in the future. I should emphasize that, yes, this is a timed exclusivity, deal like the Epic Game Store, but really, the first couple of months is what matters most for a new release. That's when the most copies are sold, so I think that this is a strategy that's not going away anytime soon. But finally, we move to our top new subjects of the day. This includes The Last of Us 2 actor Troy Baker, who portrays Joel, slamming the spoilers and pretty much what's been happening the last couple of weeks to the game, and he really just responded strongly to a lot of the hatred that's being given to Naughty Dog. We also have an update on on some of the outrage surrounding Bethesda and its software, and we also have an update on the culling, which, uh my god. But as usual, before we proceed forward, if you do go on to enjoy this content and want to show your support for more videos like this, please consider hitting that like button, subscribing for more, and turning notifications on so you do not miss out on any new videos. Also, as I recently announced, I'm on Patreon. If you want to help out the channel further with financial support and gain some benefits or perks like deciding certain upcoming content, become a patron today. As always, links are down in the description below. So we'll move next to probably the biggest story that's been kind of blowing up the last week or two, and that is the Culling's return. And it's just been laughable, because the developer is delusional with what they are trying to do, and it's a really, it's it's a pathetic attempt to revive a game that really just should be, it's retired, let it go, it just did not work out. It was indeed one of the first Battle Royale experiences in 2016, but once bigger and better experiences came to be, the Culling just died off. And it also helped that the developers didn't exactly listen to the players, demands, and that also caused players to move on to other experiences. Now, the Culling in 2016, eventually they moved on, the developers, to the Culling 2, and unfortunately the Culling 2 did not have the success that the Culling did, and it was just a complete, I, I guess you could say, it was a failure. Nobody cared for it, so the developers ended up going back to the original Culling, bringing it back online, and again, they eventually abandoned that, and here we are with the Culling Origins, and as they announced on their Twitter page, if you've never played it, it was $5.99 on the Xbox Store, but the big kicker which is causing outrage is that you get one free online match per day. Additional tokens options are available, and for some reason they thought that this was going to go over well. It, it did not. It 
did not at all. But as you can see, the director of operations uh, about a couple weeks ago took to YouTube and this is the deals that they have. You can get a three pack of matches for 99 cents, 10 pack 2.99, 20 pack 4.99, or you can get the exclusive unlimited online pass, seven days, two dollars and 30 days, six dollars, and it's just pathetic. This type of monetization, and as I predicted in my last video, I really do think that this company is on the verge of going under because none of this makes any sense at all. But anyway, the developer has finally responded to PC Gamer. They did an interview and discussed their thinking behind this, and it's, it's really disgraceful and disgusting with what this uh, developer had to say, because it just doesn't really make any sense at all. So Josh Van Veld, the same guy that was pictured in that image before, he's the director of operations at Xavian, and he said that they shifted its monetization approach to ensure that players will be able to visit the island for years to come. But, I mean, I think any logical person would pretty much come to the same conclusion that this monetization does the complete opposite of that. Again, delusional he is. Now the developer tells PC Gamer that the one game limit has been bumped up to 10, and the director of operations, Josh Van Veld says he's embarrassed that the launch was unveiled with those settings. In retrospect, it was really obvious that one was not going to give us the flow of players, but you have to remember, we were kind of terrified of everybody coming back, overloading the servers, costing us a ton of money, and not spending anything. So we were afraid to turn that dial, I promise you, even... I don't think those servers were going to be overloaded. But proceeding forward into this article or interview, uh, Vin Veld continues giving his outlook and discusses what really is the problem. Despite the large number of players, the developer wasn't able to cover its cost through cosmetics and crates, so the calling the original 2016 installment or version was shut down. While it got a chilly reception when it was announced, Vin Veld thinks that the new model for Origins could still be the solution, giving Xavian a more consistent income to keep the studio and game afloat. The issue he claims was the developer did not expect players to want to return daily. Oh my. We definitely weren't looking at it from a standpoint of somebody who says, hey, if this game is around for a year, I'm going to play it every day for a year. We don't know if those people exist. Oh, I got a headache from this guy. Now again, proceeding forward, he says, I guess a lot of people were telling us that they consider themselves long-term players, and they were not thrilled. Well, I think a lot of people just weren't thrilled because this monetization system, scheme, model is just, it's disgusting and despicable. But he uh, continues saying, especially if there's somebody who purchased the game previously, before it was pre to play, about the idea of having to spend what they feel like is a significant amount of money on an ongoing basis. This guy, I swear, the, the, none of this makes any sense at all to me. Now, this article concludes with him saying, If he could go back, Van Veld says that he'd pitch it differently and simplify things, believing that the model works, but the messaging was garbled. It doesn't seem like a model that's particularly easy to express in a way that's appealing, however, especially when compared to the more conventional free-to-play method. If you like it or you want to try it, please join us to try it out. And this is his little pitch to try to get people to join. I'm not going to give him the luxury of that. All I'm going to say is avoid disgusting monetization like this. Xavier really should just go under if they think this is the way that business should be conducted because this is a model that's been attempted before in the past years ago and it went nowhere and this again will go nowhere. Now we move to our next topic and that is a huge update on the Doom Eternal spyware mess which a lot of people were concerned about. The game was unfortunately it was getting review bombed on Metacritic and Steam because a lot of people were just absolutely pissed about these changes but since then its software has done something which is uncommon in this this AAA games industry. They listened. Big time. This is actually something that id Software did previously with the whole Mick Gordon situation. They came out with an open letter explaining everything that had happened. It was very detailed and it felt true. It's just something strange. You don't see this from this AAA games industry. You see vague statements and PR speak and it's clear that a lot of these companies are trying to hide things. But id Software, up to this point with all the outrage surrounding Doom Eternal, has handled this very well. It feels very strange saying that. Again, you just don't see this ever. Anyway, we have again seen that with Doom Eternal, in which id Software's executive producer Marty Stratton came out with a statement on the game subreddit and explained again in detail what their thought process was with the anti-cheat software, which has been compared to spyware or malware because of the high level of access that it has on your computer. I mean, pretty much it has admin privileges. Anyway, Marty Stratton took to the game subreddit saying, Our team's original decision to include DeNuvo anti 
Tai Chi in Update 1 was based on a number of factors. Protect battle mode players from cheaters now, the multiplayer established cheat protection in the campaign now, in preparation for the future launch of Invasion, which is a blend of campaign and multiplayer. Kernel level integrations are typically the most effective in preventing cheating, and also could be you know, a big problem in the future. De Nuvo's integration met our standards for security and privacy. Okay, players were disappointed on Doom 2016 with our delay in adding anti-cheat technology to protect the game's multiplayer. Now, obviously, a lot of people have different opinions of that. That's whatever. But the good news is that despite our best intentions, feedback from players has made it clear that we must reevaluate our approach to anti-cheat integration. With that, we will remove the anti-cheat technology from the game in our next PC update. So yes, the outrage and a lot of the complaints that were made, they have been answered and id Software did in fact listen. Now, this statement continues just a little bit more. It says, It is important to note that our decision to include anti-cheat was guided by nothing other than the factors and goals I've outlined above, all driven by our team at id Software. I've seen speculation online that Bethesda, our parent company and publisher, is forcing these or other decisions on us, and it's simply untrue. It's also worth noting that our decision to remove the anti-cheat software is not based on the quality of the de Nouveau anti-cheat solution. Many have unfortunately related the performance and stability issues introduced in Update 1 to the introduction of anti-cheat. They are not related. Now he continues stating that our investigation we discovered and have fixed several crashes in our code related to customizable skins. We are also able to identify and fix a number of other memory related crashes that should improve overall stability for players. Finally we believe the performance issues some players have experienced on PC are based on a code change. So so pretty much it sounds like a lot of the issues are connected to other things that have been brought in update one not exactly the actual anti-cheat software but regardless it is definitely good to see that id software has listened and they have changed course because i just think that de nouveau anti-cheat whatever they're saying in the statement it's just a bad idea and I, I guarantee you the next game that adds this software you're going to see the same reaction now some other interesting news is that bethesda game studios or the company bethesda has responded to some of the concerns surrounding Fallout 76's Battle Pass. Now, in particular, it was announced on their new roadmap that they were going to be introducing a new season system into Fallout 76, which will have about four seasons per year, and each of them will generally last around 10 weeks. One of the big concerns that emerged from this announcement was the fact that Bethesda was being very vague about how this season system would work beyond this summer. And it got me and a lot of people thinking if they were planning maybe a paid and free option in the coming months for a future season seasons. See, the reason why a lot of us came to this conclusion was this specific line. You will be able to take part in our inaugural summer season for free as soon as it begins with update 20. There was nothing about the future of this, so that's really how concerns came to be. But fortunately, it does appear that Bethesda is planning for this feature to be free, and I really should put that free in quotes. But Bethesda said in a statement now on this update to this uh, roadmap, since we originally posted this, we've seen questions and concerns from the community about what it will cost to take part in seasons after the first one. We'd like to clarify that participation in Fallout seasons will be free for all of our players, and we apologize for any confusion. There's been a lot of apologies with Fallout 76 since its launch, people. We're looking into potentially adding some bonus rewards at certain ranks for Fallout First members, but not for Season 1. We are currently focused on getting this system implemented and seeing your feedback on Seasons first before we include any rewards. Now again, there are still some issues connected with this, like what actual rewards could Fallout First members get. I'm guessing it's probably just going to be some cosmetics, but as we've seen before, just because it's cosmetic doesn't mean that there's no outrage that's going to emerge, as we've seen with the Fallout First subscription service. I mean, paywalling uh, NCR Ranger armor was a that was a big no-no for for a lot of people in the community. A lot of people were unhappy about that. Now, this Fallout 76 season system, it pretty much is just a basic battle pass now, but there are still some problems that are exclusive just to Fallout 76. As I said in my original video, the fact that they're overhauling the Atom system, and now that this new system is going to make it that less atoms are delivered, it does call to question Bethesda's motivation for all of this? Is it because they want to ensure that people are getting less atoms and getting, I guess you could say, certain selected maybe cosmetics that people don't care for, so players don't actually have the option of spending their atoms on things that they want, like stuff in the atomic shop? So again, there are still some problems, some just 
connected with battle passes in general like the fact that after two weeks you can just buy your way through it and there are some things in here that I guess you could consider pay to win but either way just Fallout 76 has been getting a lot of monetization which makes it I guess more similar to a free to play game which makes me wonder if eventually this is going to go free to play. Now moving on to probably the biggest gaming disaster thus far here in 2020 and that is of course The Last of Us Part 2. This game has been it's quickly gone from one of the most highly anticipated games ever to just a lot of people very pissed at Naughty Dog and going out of their way to make them look bad. Now if you haven't been following along or don't know what's been going on, The Last of Us Part 2 pretty much the entire game has leaked. Naughty Dog claims that it was not an employee who leaked the game or an angry employee that was the original rumor and there's a lot of reasons why people came to that belief because Naughty Dog doesn't exactly treat a lot of their employees right but Naughty Dog and Sony claim that it was actually hackers that were able to pretty much obtain or get access to a dev kit of The Last of Us Part 2. I believe the dev kit was uh, as of March and they leaked a lot of the big moments that come from the game. I believe hours of gameplay is leaked and all of the big moments have been spoiled for many so as I've been saying for weeks just be very very careful if you are looking forward to The Last of Us Part 2 or if you just want to give it a try for yourself because yeah these spoilers are everywhere including any of the game announcements unrelated to The Last of Us Part 2 spoilers are being thrown and even on YouTube like I was actually researching for this video and I typed in The Last of Us 2 on the YouTube search bar and two of the top search results were massive spoilers for The Last of Us Part 2 right there in the title and you just have to be cautious. What's been happening in recent weeks is that Naughty Dog has well they've been continuing to see the fallout with many unhappy with what The Last of Us Part 2 is about. See some people who have actually read the spoilers and seen it they are unhappy with the direction and they're taking their frustration out on or at Naughty Dog and as you can see on Naughty Dog's official YouTube page uh, a special message that was given from the game's director Neil Druckmann has been met with universal anger. 36,000 likes and 117,000 dislikes and comments have been turned off and on the actual official PlayStation channel all of the comments have been turned off and the likes and dislikes ratings have been turned off so Sony and Naughty Dog have definitely been going into damage control and they've actually gone into damage control by going after YouTubers just talking about these leaks. They've done this by abusing YouTube's copyright system, falsely striking down videos that don't include screenshots or clips but just talk about about this mess, which is covered under fair use laws, something that lawyer Hoaglaw has confirmed. It's been basically Sony's way of silencing the critical coverage given to this unreleased game that probably could have an impact on sales. Essentially, some companies will do whatever they can or want to get their way, even if they are knowingly false flagging material down. Also, it certainly helps that many of the video game outlets, or really all of the video game outlets and websites are just ignoring this situation entirely, not talking about how Sony is abusing YouTube's copyright to take down critical coverage of The Last of Us 2, which, uh, yeah, that definitely is very suspicious. Fortunately, though, Sony in recent weeks has backed off a bit from this and have reversed course on many of these copyright takedowns but not before creating massive stress and problems for certain affected content creators. Anyway as I've been saying this is a giant mess. These leaks have been a massive problem and have severely damaged Naughty Dog's reputation. Now while most of the company has remained quiet on the situation, Troy Baker who portrays Joel actually has spoken out. It began first with this video around May 10th in which for some reason he believes only some images leaked. Look, if you think that game could be spoiled by a couple screenshots, really? A studio with 30 years, 30 plus years of development, with so many awards under their belt, they can't even put them all in one trophy closet or trophy. They have more established pedigree than any other studio I can possibly think of. They've been around and producing award-winning blockbuster crazy games for three decades. And this is the most biggest ambitious game they've ever done. You really think that that experience could be undone by a couple screenshots? I think six years of development could be undone by that. It's a game. It's a game. 
you have to experience it. As said before, much more than screenshots has leaked, and yes, full scenes of gameplay or important moments being spoiled definitely will ruin this game for a lot of people, especially since the main draw of this game is the story and just the story. Also, Naughty Dog's long history and awards don't mean much. I mean, look at a lot of this AAA games industry. Companies like Bethesda, Bioware, and Blizzard were once loved by so many, but times have changed. Obviously, the reasons are different, but yeah, one release can definitely change everything. Now, a few days following this video, Troy Baker released another one directed at those posting spoilers of the game. I don't know why there are people that exist whose sole purpose, seemingly, is to destroy the art of others. I don't know what that is. I can't comprehend that. Like, I, I literally don't understand the mind that goes, what I'm going to do in this moment of my fleeting life is this. I, 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 I don't get that. I don't understand the mind that says every, this could be my last breath. This could be my last moment on this planet and I'm going to spend it with someone. Like, I don't understand. I don't understand you. So I think his remarks kind of speak for itself here. He obviously can't comprehend why people have to be so mean by posting spoilers and ruining the experience for others. Now, the most recent comments that Baker gave was just a few days ago, actually, in a Q&A session with ComfessCon. These extended thoughts go a lot deeper. Baker discusses Naughty Dog's reputation and how hard they've worked on this game, how he respects Neil Druckmann for taking the heat from the internet because of this whole controversy. He emphasizes emphasizes how most people are still excited for this game, he claims tons of misinformation is still being sped around, and pushes back on people claiming Naughty Dog has disrespected these Last of Us characters for the direction that they have taken. And that after everything that has happened over the last six years, the rumors and the speculations, then the release and the celebration, and then all of this controversy that's happened in the last couple of weeks. Yes, sir. Which unfortunately has taken the spotlight um, what I love is that there's still, by and large, the majority of people are going, I still want to know more about this story. I still want to know more about this experience. Neil has, has, has taken the brunt of a lot of this. And I respect him because he said, look, there's times when I receive, you know, from, from, from the public, I'm going to receive credit that doesn't go to me. And... I can't spend time fending off, so I passed that credit along to the team. He was like, so I'm going to take responsibility, uh, whether it's mine or not. I'm like, dude, unfair credit un un uh, or undue credit and undue uh, blame. And I was like, I respect mm -hmm. that. Hundreds of people spent uh, that, that are the most talented, top of their game, working for one of the most highly coveted studios to work for in the entire world, spent six years of their life carefully crafting and curating this experience from the time you look at the box art to the time you put that disc in mm -hmm. from the time the law the, the the opening screen comes up to the final credit six years of painstakingly detailed for that someone said do you feel that they're disrespecting the characters mm -hmm. but ba based on these leaks okay yeah and i said who, who's potentially disrespecting the characters? The people that have spent six years painstakingly, talently, creatively, carefully curating this experience over years? Mm -hmm. Or the people that, for kicks and credit, threw it out there for over a few days? I was like, mm -hmm. that's disrespecting these characters. So, and anybody that looks at them is, is to me, is, is feeding into that because there's still so much misinformation that's out there. It's kind of funny when I'm like, is that what you think? Okay, sure. Play the game and find out. So Troy Baker definitely sharing a very strong opinion of Trust Naughty Dog based on their history. And as I said before, a lot of people just don't feel that way. Baker also really does highlight how much hard work has gone into this game while failing to realize or just not mentioning that a lot of this labor has come to be because of a toxic crunch culture that Naughty Dog's leadership is responsible for. Additionally, Baker criticizes really anyone who has even engaged or looked at these leaks 
Force, which I'm just gonna say this controversy is still far from over. Unfortunately though, as the release does get closer, we're going to see The Last of Us 2 talked about a lot more, and that will certainly result in people having the game spoiled, and once the game actually releases, who honestly knows what the universal opinion will be on the direction that Naughty Dog has taken. I certainly can envision this being pretty divisive, with people fighting over this for years to come. Finally though, to our last subject is Ubisoft, somewhat addressing how microtransactions will work in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and I really should put an emphasis on that word somewhat. See, I've been pretty vocal about my displeasure with how Ubisoft has approached monetization in their recent games. In particular, both Far Cry New Dawn and Assassin's Creed Odyssey included nice grind walls, which forced players to either pay up or spend a bunch of time on on annoying busy work to obtain the necessary skill level or gear needed to proceed forward. Specifically with Odyssey, the game felt like it had about 25 hours of main story content that was stretched out to about 50 hours, with all of the grinding that needed to be done to reach the ending. It was frustrating, kind of annoying, and one of the big gripes that many had with the game. Anyway, in a new interview coming via Kotaku, Valhalla's game director Ashraf Ismail talked about how they would handle monetization this time around. So we've reflected a lot since Origins on progression and what that means for players, Ismail said, and we have taken a new take on progression in this game. We have more the concept of power, power that is gained through, let's say, the player gaining skills. He said that the developers are trying to avoid any kind of big progression walls or anything that would keep players from accessing the parts of the game they're interested in. He specifically said he didn't want people to hit a progression spike that would keep them from experiencing the narrative content. In other words, he wants players to be able to finish the game's main story without grinding or going on a ton of side quests. Wanting and actually doing are two different things though, and when games like Origins and Odyssey include XP boosters, it certainly calls into question if a developer or a team is trying to stretch out the game's content to, you know, try and persuade players into purchasing some good old microtransactions. Anyway, Ismail told Kotaku, as for the potential presence and drama of an XP booster, Ismail would only say that they're not talking about monetization yet and want to earn every single penny that you're going to pay for the game. So for right now, this answer is somewhat unsatisfactory in my opinion, but then again, we haven't seen much of Valhalla yet, so hopefully this does get the attention it truly does deserve. Right now, all we know is a few exclusive missions connected to pre-ordering and the season pass, and also certain more expensive versions of the game include different types of special gear and items, like an alternate look for the in-game bird and some stuff to put in the player's settlement. So one can only hope that Ubisoft has learned their lesson with monetization, especially following the fallout that they enjoyed from Ghost Recon Breakpoint, but I guess only time will tell. Anyway, we discussed a lot of different gaming news topics today, more than usual, so let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. But thank you for watching, make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this video, or if you found any informative value, and make sure to follow my other social media accounts for updates on new videos, links are always down in the description below. I'm most active on Twitter, giving opinions on news that I do not always get into video form, so do make sure to follow me over there. Also, check out my Discord for all sorts of discussion on games. And again, thank you for joining. Consider subscribing for more videos like this, and I'll see you later.